Hello, I'm Davia Chambers and this is Let's Talk Tobago. Today we're at Paradise Found, a villa on the western side of Tobago. Although it was built 20 years ago, it remains in great condition and is part of Mount Irvin's landscape. So what's the story behind this place? Well, after visiting Tobago for the first time, the owner felt he had stumbled upon paradise. He and his wife purchased the land and his wife designed this spacious five-bedroom villa. This place is located on a hill directly opposite the Mount Irvin Beach facility. It's not hard to see why it got its name. We'll show you more of this villa, but first, let's tell you what's happening in our stories this week. The Shaw Park Complex hosts its first event, Tima Among a Chosen Few. The agency is nationally recognized for providing efficient service and a number of international footballers will work with communities throughout Tobago. Sit Tobago, ready to provide your community with the highest degree of professional services in emergency response. Contact Sit Mariah at 660-0065 or Sit Speyside at 660-6096. Sit 24 hour services, emergencies, medical or other. Sit Pro, the new face of emergency management. Welcome back to Let's Talk Tobago. Thanks for joining us today at Paradise Found, a villa located in Mount Irvin. They say home is where the heart is and this place certainly serves that purpose for families and friends who need to get away but still require familiarity. Here offers daily housekeeping as well as cooking services. But if your idea of a vacation involves experimenting in the kitchen, this could be done as well. But let's leave our location and take you across to the Shaw Park Complex that hosted its first event on February 3rd. As you may know, the complex is almost ready. Almost ready because the Tobago House of Assembly wants to get it right before it's officially declared open. They came up with a plan to test the facilities and this is how it works. Over the next few weeks, a number of events will be held at the complex. These events will be closely monitored and, if need be, things that aren't working as intended will be tweaked. Well, the first assessment took place. Here's how that turned out. A little bit from the first event held at the Shaw Park Complex. This Thanksgiving service, entitled United in Praise, brought together religious leaders from different persuasions. This event is a precursor to a number of others leading up to the grand opening within the next few months. The Shaw Park Complex can seat 5,000 and also has the capacity to host sport and cultural events thanks to its modular floors and spacious interior. In fact, the Chief Secretary sees the potential for the complex to become the religious convention center of the world. I'm Alyssa Crosby for Let's Talk Tobago. And while we're on the topic of testing, another organization in Tobago has also been scrutinized. 
the result? They came out on top. Now here's some context. It's no secret government institutions get a bad rap. They're notorious for red tape and the royal runaround. But that's exactly why there's a plan to change this. They now compete with each other to prove they're able to provide an efficient service. They're also given feedback on how they can improve what they're doing. The Tobago Emergency Management Agency aced this exam. Let's join Omodara Mills to find out how. The Virtual Vision app was introduced by the Tobago Emergency Management Agency, TEMA, to update Tobagonians in times of a disaster or accident. This approach has set the agency apart and is one of the reasons it received the Diamond Standard Certificate. As you may be aware, the Tobago public is aware that uh, we are among the leaders of, of the use of modern technology in our operation and that really placed us uh, in, in a good, um, it, it speaks well for the organization and what we are able to achieve. But the use of technology in tracking disasters and recording the assistance given to persons during difficult times is not the only reason Timor received the Diamond Standard. The agency's customer service out in the villages is another standout area. Tima makes this happen through its community-based emergency response team, CERT. These technicians are trained in disaster events, such as the extraction of vehicles in accidents, water rescues and mass casualty management. When people are affected by natural disasters or even any type of emergencies, you are now able to provide them with immediate help, be it a medical call, be it a, a, a roof being dislodged or anything structural. These technicians are well trained, well equipped, well tooled and, um, to, to be able to provide and is embedded within the community and provide that type of service. TEMA is among seven public organizations in the country to receive the Diamond Standard Certificate for this year. Mr. Stewart says the agency's work fulfills the Office of the Chief Secretary's mission to provide exceptional service to all of its customers. We feel very happy and elated to know that uh, we were able to capture this award. Uh, it, it really set the standards from a very high, from a high level. The certificate will last for three years, but Tima has promised not to become complacent, but instead to continue to improve its operations. I'm Umadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. And like Tima, other organizations in Tobago want to excel. Not everyone will go the route of designing an app, but there are those making little changes and getting big results. The story we're about to share with you chronicles the journey of Tobagonians many had written off. In some instances, some felt they were unemployable. But, as Caroline Wallace tells us, they've been trained and some are now business owners. This is what we equate the Community Environmental Protection Enhancement Program, or CPEP, with. But a lot more goes on. The focus goes beyond environmental protection, enhancement and beautification, and now includes a teaching component. YTEP and the, and the retraining program has been, we have been collaborating with them, and they have been very instrumental in providing us with training for most of the employees at CPEP. And they have various cycles every year so and they train they send us applications and we send out the applications to the people since 2013 over 100 cpep employees graduated from various programs and many of them have moved on to gain lucrative employment some of them were even unemployable and cpep being the social program that it is would employ these people and eventually they will develop by this trade through the training and some, many of them have left because our numbers when it started was way up in near to a thousand and now we under 500. And those numbers might come down even more because a batch of employees from the east of the island have devised a plan that will wean them off of CPAP. This means that the program which was once criticized for encouraging dependency is steering the once unemployable in a new direction. I'm Caroline Wallace for Let's Talk Tobago. It's time to take a break, but do stay with us for details on how some former international footballers will be giving of their time to communities across Tobago.
message from the Trinidad and Tobago Fire Service. Teach children how to escape on their own in case you can't help them. Close doors behind you as you leave. If the smoke alarm sounds, get out and stay out. Never go back inside. If you have to escape through smoke, get low and go under the smoke to your way out. Call the fire service from outside your home. A message from the Trinidad and Tobago Fire Service. Thank you for staying with us. You're viewing Let's Talk Tobago, coming to you from Paradise Found, a villa in Mount Irvin. Guests can enjoy a view of the beach from their spacious bedrooms as all of them are ocean facing. And an interesting feature of this place is this kidney shaped swimming pool right in the porch. This allows you to enjoy a lazy day under cover whether it's raining or the sun is out. The porch also has a dining area where you can barbecue. And as you think of the possibilities, here's another issue to consider. Unfortunately, it doesn't involve lounging and enjoying life's pleasures, but it does require giving serious thought to another aspect of your environment, your workplace. The International Labour Organization found that while improved technology protects employees from dangerous work, new challenges are emerging. For instance, biological hazards pose a potential threat to those in healthcare, agriculture, and waste management. Tobago understands this and has chosen to give its employees information they need to stay safe and protect others around them. Accidents like this can cause injuries and put people out of work for a long time. That's why the Occupational Health and Safety Department is facilitating a series of workshops about safety in the office. We have so many issues in the office and around us generally, and it's important to know how to be safe, where to be safe, and preventative measures. The participants discussed areas of potential hazards and ways they can protect themselves. Topics include safe lifting, preventing slips, trips and falls, proper signs, electrical safety and ergonomics. That's using equipment designed to reduce discomfort and fatigue so as to maximize productivity. Preventative maintenance for me is what stood out among above the rest which means that you don't wait for something to happen to do the necessary repairs and run headless to try to fix it. The facilitator and OSH officer Brian Patrick says the workshop is done to increase the Begonians' awareness of safety and well-being in the workplace. We're aiming to shift the, the culture and the teacher as a whole. So it's important that when persons will have left the session that they take back to their, their, their workplace new knowledge and, and work as, as agents of change in the work environment. The International Labour Organization estimates that every 15 seconds an employee dies from a work-related accident or disease. It's hoped that workshops like these will improve safety and reduce these numbers. I'm Umadara Mills for Let's Talk to Bego. Let's switch gears to tell you about a community-based project. If you're a fan of the English Premier League and live in Tobago, you just might get the chance to meet some former greats. Well, full disclosure, it's not just anyone. All local stars, the aspiring ones, students and volunteers will be given the opportunity to meet and learn from the players. Who knows, they might just discover the next Dwight York. At least, that's what the BA Tobago Football Legends Challenge hopes to achieve. Juliet James tells us more. Communities across Tobago are twinned with former professional footballers from the English Premier League as the BA Legends launched its community outreach program. The former players will conduct football clinics with local clubs on the island. Team Arsenal will work alongside clubs from Roxborough, Argyle and Goodwood. Arsenal legend Loriano Bissan Itamemir, also known as Loren, says he's delighted to be part of this initiative. So I'm going to teach them things from the middle of the park, uh, things from play to when you play uh, sideways or when you play close to the line, and also things that when you play as a striker or behind a striker. As I play with my national team with Cameroon, uh, as you can see in the Olympic, I play inside in that position. So. I'm going to show them a little bit of uh, 
uh, what they have to do when they have to play on, on, on that places. Two students from Roxborough Secondary, Juari Hospitalis and Gabriel Sears, will have the opportunity to get even closer to some of the football legends. Why? They are the recipients of a giveaway from one of the major sponsors. And him and his family uh, can come along as guests of uh, Flo, Columbus. Um, we'll introduce them to all the players, we'll bring them down, um, uh, limousine, so uh, he'll, he'll be treated like a professional footballer for the day and uh, hopefully he'll have a good time and he's, uh, his family as well, so um, he can experience um, something very special. <laughs> The BA Tobago Football Legends Challenge is endorsed by the Trinidad and Tobago Football Federation and will run from June 15th to 22nd. The Tobago Legends Tournament will see 64 of the best players battle in a six-a-side Legends Tournament. From the Division of Tourism and the Transportation, I'm Julia James reporting for Let's Talk Tobago. Another community-oriented project is the Home Gardening Initiative. The idea is to ensure Tobagonians have access to sufficient food at all times or what the technocrats refer to as food security. The project started three years ago and it takes the form of a competition that encourages families to get involved in farming. Omidara Mills has the story on the impact that this project is having. Herbs and vegetable crops grown in containers in this backyard. Despite the limited space, Arlette Charles Hercules creates a garden that got her the awards for best use of space and best use of troughs and containers. She's also the overall winner of the 2014 home gardening competition. Mrs. Charles Hercules says there are several benefits to starting her own home garden. I've reduced my food bill because, well, I grow what I eat, I eat what I grow. I've had the opportunity to share around with friends and family and so on. I've supplemented my income because I sell some of my produce and I think home gardening relaxes mind, body and spirit. The home gardening initiative is meant to stimulate interest in agriculture and the structure of the competition allows participation from different groups. One category is conventional gardening which encourages those with more space to plant on long beds. The winner in that area is Evelyn Kwashi. Another home gardener is Wayne James. He is the winner of the amenities and horticulture category. This area incorporates flowers with vegetables and fruits. Mr. James is elated his work is publicly recognized. He says he enjoys planting his own crops since he can eat chemical-free foods. I always plant things around me and I like to plant my own food because there's a lot of chemical that they're giving out to the people. So I just plant my own things so that I eat, eat good food. Right, so I don't like to go and buy it. So they're looking big and plucky and not, but this time they're not good. So I prefer the little local thing that's around my yard in the natural soil. Since the project's inception, the Division of Agriculture, Marine Affairs, Marketing and the Environment has seen an increase in the number of registered home gardeners and gardens. From the initial start, we didn't have the competition. We didn't even have um, as much person on the team. And that's in 2012. So from then to now, and at least for us participating in a lot of exhibitions. We would have had, we would have started off, let's say, with about 80-something persons, and now we have over 300 persons involved in the initiative. So, and it's actually growing. For 2015, the division is ensuring schools and more young people get involved in this kind of farming. The competition for this year will start in March and end in October. I'm Umadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. We're taking another break, but stay with us to celebrate the Tobago bands that made it to the Panorama Finals. They're also sharing some of their secrets with us.
This is Let's Talk Tobago and today we're at Paradise Found, a three-story villa in Mount Irving. This place accommodates 10 guests comfortably. There's room on this second floor specifically for sunbathers, so this is designated the sunbathing floor. But there's still more to see here as on the bottom floor, there's a room with an impressive model of a 17th century ship on display. That room also leads out to the gardens, which is literally a two-minute walk away from the Mount Irving Beach facility. Now, this place represents one aspect of tourism. Another facet is cultural tourism, a niche market Tobago wants to tap into. This island has already begun the groundwork by exposing our culture internationally. Last year alone, they visited Cuba, New York, and Canada. But they're getting some unsolicited help from Tobago Crusoe, a son of the soil featured in a major film singing the music of our island, Calypso. London. Stranger danger. There's some sort of bear over there. Probably what? selling something. Hello there. Mary. Hello. This young bear needs our help, Henry. What are you going to do now? Probably just sleep over there in that bin. That's the spirit. That's Paddington, the story of a young Peruvian bear that travels to London in search of a home. What makes this movie special to Caribbean audiences is the use of Calypso music as part of its soundtrack. But there's more in it for Tobago. The lead singer of the band is one of her own, Tobago Crusoe. In the movie, he sings Lord Kitchener's London is the place for me. London is the place for me. London, that lovely city. Tobago Crusoe won the Sukumona title back in 1983 with his hit Don't Cry Now, South Africa. He's also been featured a few times in the opening night of Tobago Heritage Festival. When he's not on stage, he writes. Some of his popular compositions include singing Sandra's Die With My Dignity. Tobago Crusoe's work is also used in schools and African-based institutions in London. But if you've never seen him, you can catch him on the big screen at Movie Town Tobago, where Paddington is now showing. Paddington's family. Paddington, coming! I'm Keisha Wilson for Let's Talk Tobago. Tobago is no stranger to Panorama. This island has numerous steel orchestras that participate in the national competition in all categories single, small, medium, and large. But we don't just participate. Our bands actually make it onto the finals and sometimes win. In fact, Tobago has cupped the medium band title on a number of occasions. This year, the bands are hoping to bring the title to Tobago. This is how they're preparing. Picture trim cats and jammers. NLCB Buccaneers and NGC Explosion. All three of these Tobago bands have made it into the 2015 Panorama Finals. That's because Buccaneers play second in the semis. These last days have been very tedious and we're going to continue to work hard because we are now in a position where we have climbed from nine points by the leading band, now it's down to four. We all sat on a clean seat in the final, so we want to give it our all. NGC Steel Explosion, third. All what we, we're going to do is a little more tightening up. We, we may add a couple seconds more onto the tune and put in a little more tempo. And we're ready. And Cats and Jammers, sixth. We are extremely pleased and very happy about our um, selection into the finals. The band worked extremely hard and the players are all elated because, you know, we, we've worked this year with a new arranger and so, you know, they had to get acquainted with him. The bands are now all working on their presentations, adding unique pieces of music to make them stand out. We are giving it our best shot and we hope to do that. I know that they better look out for us because we normally move to the front and so we are working hard on achieving that. Well, we want to tell the fireman and everybody stand by because we are going to explode. And when we explode, we'll bring the title to Tobago. We'll have to wait until Carnival Saturday 
to know who wins. But if their word is anything to go on, it appears that Tobago will be well represented. I'm Keyshawn Wilson for Let's Talk Tobago. And it's time to have your say, the segment of our program where we hear from you, our viewers. Tourism is the backbone of Tobago's economy. Visitors come here to experience our sand, sun and sea. But the island's administrators are also pushing that envelope. They want Tobago to be one of the preferred places for sports, culture and health tourism. But none of this will work if visitors to our island aren't treated well. Research shows that part of the success of tourism is making the destination tourist friendly. So today we're asking, what are you doing to make our visitors feel comfortable while they're here? This is what you said. First of all, we're trying to make the prices affordable. A range of variety of stuff that they could see and like, you know what I mean? Information about where to go to get the boats. You know what I mean? And various stuff that you know, like to eat the cuisine, the local food, crab and dumpling. I provide a service for the people. When they come, they relax, enjoy themselves and have a nice, peaceful day. Mainly we try to give them information of where to go, you know, when they're on the island where they could get, you know, um, good service, you know, hotels, you know, guest house, as well as good food. All that is try to tell them, you know, it's better to come home by us. With a big smile on our face to greet people, um, we help them with all kinds of information with regard to what we make and sell in our business. I give service with a smile, you can have samples, and we give you what you need or what you would like. If we don't have it at that point in time, you can make a request for it. They will come and ask me where the rainforest is, how can they get to go there. Well, you know, we have guys down here, and I will, you know, refer them to someone. They will come and ask me where can they have a good dinner. I will refer them where they can have a good breakfast I'll refer them also. We like you all when you all come on the island as a tourist you lost your glasses in Storby you come and you ask the light guard them back and you can get back your item before you have to rush and go and ruin your holiday. And that's how we bring this week's edition of Let's Talk Tobago to a close. Remember, you can send us your comments or queries on anything you've seen in this program to information at thagovernor or you can even visit us at www.thagovernor Like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Davia Chambers and on behalf of all of us at the Department of Information, have a safe and enjoyable week. And as we go, we leave you with some final images of Paradise Found Villa in Mount Irvin.